turn our focus to health now. And as we look at what seems to be a second wave of COVID-19 in the Eastern Cape and possibly the Western Cape as well, we can be a little reassured that we know a lot more about this virus than we did the first time round. We also have more tests available. In fact, the authorities in the Eastern Cape have introduced a rapid test. While not always as accurate as the typical PCR test, this rapid antigen test is still very useful in identifying hotspots. And of course, we have the antibody test as well, which can track if you've contracted the virus before and built up the antibodies to guarantee at least some period of immunity. Introduced in the country a few months ago, they are now widely available. But apart from personal curiosity, how useful is an antibody test as we try and come to grips with the coronavirus? I'm joined now by Professor Adrian Puren, head of the Centre of HIV and STIs at the National Institute of Communicable Diseases. Good evening, Prof. Uh, thanks so much uh, for joining us. So how useful is it to have a database of antibody tests? Sally, I, I'm not sure how useful it is in the different scenarios. I think there are scenarios where antibody tests are very useful, and I think the most useful setting really is around surveillance, is really trying to understand the extent and spread of this particular virus to really give us an idea of how to plan and what interventions could, could be useful. I think at an individual level, you're quite right. There's the um, matter about curiosity and knowing your, your particular status in terms of your, your exposure. But I think from a clinical perspective, it may well have certain limited uses in particular um, settings. For example, in children where there's multi-inflammatory syndromes, for example, or individuals where there may be a strong suspicion that this person may well have had um, exposure to COVID but has a PCR negative result, for example, where, for example, an antibody test um, would certainly help. Mm. But I think, Main, uh, coming back to your particular point, in fact, where um, antigen tests are possibly um, really um, more useful than, than the antibody test. Yes, and the antigen tests, I understand, they give a result a lot quicker. They're still done with that no, a nasal swab or the swab in the mouth, but they give you quite a quick result. Um, and that's what they're using in the Eastern Cape. Is that right? That is correct, yes. So um, just to add to your, your point about um, the accuracy, uh, it's really around this, the sensitivity. And it's thought that in terms of the viral load that is detected, it's much less than the actual PCR, which is still the, the reference um, test for, for diagnosis. But certainly when you are in the phase of a very high viral load, these tests can perform very well. They may have a shorter window as well compared to PCR, but that's where the utility is, in fact, because you can actually expand the extent of, of testing in the community or clinic settings and get results within, uh, as you said, about 20 to 30 minutes, for example. And you can use it multiple times. So again, you know, previously people thought perhaps um, the antibody test would be helpful in particular healthcare settings or home care settings, for example. But I, my sense would be that that's where the antigen test may actually be more useful than the actual rapid um, tests that, that are currently available for detecting antibodies. Mm. So, so the antibody one is interesting because I was thinking, surely it's a useful one if you're about to travel, if you know you've got immunity. So yes, it might be. But on the other hand, how long do antibodies last in the system from COVID-19? Do we actually know yet? Well, I think we're getting more information. You're quite right. In fact, if you look at the vaccine results, that's another um, added uh, benefit from, from these vaccine results is that, in fact, now we do know that the likely correlates of, of immunity would be antibodies and neutralizing antibodies specifically. And, in fact, there's more evidence now that the antibodies may last longer than we thought. I think initially there were reports showing waning immunity in a few months. But I think now after six to eight months, people still have antibodies. And the majority of them will actually have antibodies and are likely to be neutralizing or protective antibodies. I think there have been reports about reinfection. I think that that was the, the major concern, was that you know, uh, because of your waning immunity, that you're now more susceptible. But I, in fact, it's become a rare event, a rare event in the sense that uh, very often we don't have the first RNA result to go back and, and see whether or not the virus that you are now having in terms of your infection is the same as or different. So I, I would caution a bit about reinfection, but my sense is that the majority of people are likely to be protective if we look at some of the, the, the vaccine results and some of the results from cohorts that have actually been followed up. You know, bearing in mind that, uh, you know, we're coming into our prime domestic tourism season where many of us are going to be moving around the country. 
Do you think on a personal level, especially if you're going to be meeting up with friends and family that you haven't seen, possibly elderly folk as well, is it a good idea to know your status, to get either an antibody test, where, as you say, the antibodies could actually last quite a long time uh, in your system, or even go for a COVID test? Yeah, so a few cautions. So, again, I would like to urge that people keep to their safety bubbles as much as possible rather than um, increasing their, their risk. However, if those opportunities do arise and you use antibody tests, there are additional cautions. Um, the South African Regulatory Authority uh, for in vitro diagnostics has certainly approved certain tests, but in terms of their sensitivity, we just need to be cautious that the, the target profile has been set at 85% in terms of sensitivity, but it has a very high specificity. So again, if you test negative, um, it doesn't necessarily rule out the fact that you actually may have been exposed. So I think there are some cautions as to how one would actually use rapid tests under those circumstances. I can understand the, the rationale behind that. And remember, we also spoke about immunity passports, uh, coming back to your point about, about travel. But again, I, I really would urge caution around the, the use of those particular tests for those types of, of purposes. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was Professor Adrian Puren, head of the Centre of HIV and STIs at the National Institute of Communicable Diseases.